Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to a very special episode of the React Podcast. Yes, uh, we are back again, and uh, I will also add that uh, the co-op is still making a comeback, so stay tuned for details on that later on. Uh, but I'm your host, Richard Bailey, and today I'm joined by Miss Dana Crombie. Dana a- Abercrombie, hey, how, how's it going, Dana? Dana Crombie, I like that one. <laughs> That's a new one. I had a Dana Apple Pie one time. Whoa, whoa. Wait, who yes. said that? It was in the mail. And it was Dana Apple. They just completely gave up and was like Dana Apple Pie. I, I like I, I like Kroby the best. Um, I'm doing well. I'm excited for this show. I'm still alive and breathing. Yay. That's I'm locked good. down, by the way. Yeah, in New York City. So that's uh, I, I want to send my thoughts and prayers to everybody that is impacted. Uh, but I know I can't talk about that too heavily because then we will get demonetized because we mentioned the word Corona. So uh, yeah, we'll see about that. Uh, and of course, we are joined by Mr. Gary A. Swaby. How's it going, Gary? It's going good. Uh, in light of you know everything that's happening, I guess I'm okay. Um, you know, um, you know, we, we do have to be careful, of course, and I am self-isolating at the moment, but hey, it is what it is. I mean, we're all going through this together. So, you know, and at least, you know, we have each other and we're here to, to talk about something that will take our minds off of what's happening in the world. So, so that's the good thing. Absolutely. I agree 100%. Very well said. So, um... We wanted to do a react today because we need to talk about this amazing, life-changing PS5 reveal that we all witnessed today by our Lord and Savior, Mark Cerny. Um, now, before I before we get into our initial thoughts, uh, I know, Gary, I'm just going to go to you so you can tell us what are the specs that we learned about today in this uh, amazing, wonderfully well-produced uh, reveal event. <laughs> Yeah, well produced indeed. Uh, but we'll, 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 we'll get to that. But uh, let me uh, let me just read out the specs, you know, because um, that's what everyone you know wanted today. Like everyone was looking for. Okay, what what are the specs going to be? Of course, we wanted to hear more information too. But hey, uh, we can only assume that that's going to come, uh, you know, uh, later on this year. But uh, what we got today in terms of the specs were as follows. So the CPU is an AX Zen 2 cores with a 3.5 gigahertz variable frequency. The GPU is 10.28 teraflops um, and it's at 2.23 gigahertz frequency. Uh, as for the GPU, it's you know custom RDNA2 and uh, the memory interface is 16 gigabyte GDDR R6, uh, 20, 20, sorry, <laughs> I'm, I'm missing up the numbers right now. It's 256 bit. And uh, the memory bandwidth is 448 gigabytes. Internal storage is, I'm very disappointed about this, by the way, it's um, <laughs> 825 gigabyte SSD. Now here's what's impressive about this. The IO is 5.5 gigabytes raw, um, which, you know, I'll, I'll explain in a little while. Uh, and, you know, there's, there's an expandable storage solution that will allow you to kind of plug in your own external hard drive or, you know, whatever you want. And you can, you know, you can even have, you can run your PS4 games off of that external storage as well. So that's pretty good. And it has an optical 4K Blu-ray drive. So, so yeah, you know that's that's the specs right there. Um, it's a uh, you know AMD AMD architecture basically. So yeah, that that's pretty much it. Um, now, do you want me to also compare it to the competition right now, or should we get to that later? Well, I guess we can get to that later because uh, I, I feel if you compare it to the competition now, people will say, oh, well, we're praising Xbox and, you know, they'll, they'll make this about both companies going against each other, even though Microsoft has already said they, don't, they do not consider 
Sony competition unless they just said that just to try and deflect. Um, so yeah. yeah, we'll get it. We'll get into that later. <laughs> okay. But yeah, well, uh, what's your thoughts? You know, after that, uh, do you, you guys have any initial thoughts based on you know hearing all of the specs and everything? Well, let's let's go to Dana first because I, I definitely have something that I want to say. But uh, yeah, l ladies first. <laughs> Um, yay. Um, um, for those who, um, are not huge into, um, who understand fully what all of that stuff means, um, I'm sure that they, they just want to make sure that they're able to play the game and they want it with a very quick download speed and they want it with the best graphics possible and, by the looks of things not comparison or just by taking the ps5 itself it seems like it's impressive for what it is but i felt that there was more room to grow with but overall i'm not disappointed by it yeah and rightfully so like because this is one thing i want to say like as much as I am going to be telling jokes. Like I'm going to be transparent about that. I am going to be joking on this. <laughs> I, I am going to sound harsh sometimes, but I do want to say that a lot of this doesn't actually matter. Like you know, if you're just a gamer who wants to enjoy games, um, a lot of this doesn't matter. Like, but for for us, you know, um, who are enthusiasts, and you know, we kind of get off on the discussion, the debate. The conversation you know uh, there's a, a lot of talking points here uh, but you know I do want to say that you know when it comes to the act of just playing games this is great technology still you know so that's why I do want to well, say well uh, well uh, uh, allow me to say this and um, I do have some rather controversial thoughts uh, I, I, I do agree with what you said this is a good piece of hardware uh, and and we obviously know from Sony's track record that it will have a great library of games. But my but but I, I have to be honest and say that this was a very underwhelming presentation for me. Thinking about it from a consumer standpoint, as you said, the consumer does not care about any of this stuff. All, it, it, as a consumer myself, it, or, you know, if I'm just thinking of as a consumer, I'm thinking, how much does this system cost? When is it coming out? When is the games now? Obviously, they said at the beginning of the presentation because it's a very controlled message. They said we'll talk about the games at a later time. So I said, okay, that's fine. I wasn't expecting them to dive into that once I heard that. But then, you know, Mark Cerny gives his uh, university uh, presentation to everybody and tells them in, in technical terms, this is all the stuff that it does. I don't really think people care too much about that. Now you'll probably have some diehard. Sony fans out there that will say they understand everything that Mark Cerny said and they will praise it even if they don't understand it because they're like well this is a lot of information and 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 there are certain things that are technological advancements over Xbox but yet I'm just thinking to keep it real as a consumer I don't really think they care about that they care about the price point the software and when is the system coming out and we didn't get any of that information today so um, I will say, yes, I, I based on everything that I heard about the specs, it sounds good to me. Didn't really see any like concrete examples. And I think that that's something that they absolutely should have done. Like they could have showed us a game. Now, I know they had a dead sp some footage in there from Dead Space. Uh, we saw some, some images from that in the presentation. But I, I wanted to see a PS4 game running on PS4 and then what that game looks like running on PS5 to really get a feel for what are the improvements and because we didn't see any of that that tells me this system is probably a ways from coming out I don't think it's coming out this year based on that presentation it feel like it's going to get pushed to the start of next year and that would be because of what's going on with how the virus is impacting everybody. I'm pretty sure that certain parts to make the, the, the system so on and so forth, all that stuff is still on hold. So I understand that for, for, for sure fact, but I'm hopeful that when they have the next presentation, 
they actually show all of this information because I think that's what people care about more than anything else. I'm not saying it wasn't a uh, informative uh, presentation. It's just not for everybody, especially not right. the consumer, because they care about what's important and all that other stuff doesn't really matter. They just want to know how much the system costs, when is it coming out, and what games can I play on this system. So yeah, I sorry. Oh no! Oh no! Go ahead. No, I was completely agree. It felt like it was one of those computer science lecture halls. <laughs> you know, when you're, we have to do remote lessons right now, and let's watch Professor Cerny uh, talk about computers and and teraflops. And I felt that again, unless you're one of those diehard people, not even necessarily in the consoles, but just a diehard person who knows their their computers and their you know the, the proper terminology for things, you lose a lot of the audience, and it just didn't have any of that fun excitement about it the presentation itself i felt that when you're presenting even if it's boring information you have to find a way to gauge the audience and make it fun and to break down things so that regular folks so that grandma betsy who's shopping for christmas season you know will say hey this is great let me pick that up for my grandson and mm -hmm. It lost a lot of the consumer, the regular consumer people. But overall, again, it was is not a bad console. Yeah, it's a great yeah. console. Just presentation wise, it was like an Oxford University computer lesson. I agree. And and one quick point that I will make because we we will we'll obviously get into this later, as as was already said. When Gary talks about the specs of, of Xbox, I, I, I don't want to sit up here and say that, uh, you know, Microsoft, obviously, they um, they are clear far in the head to, you know, have done a better job. But they, they, they definitely have given us a hell of a lot more information about the Xbox Series X than, than we've gotten on PS5. We even seen what the system could look like. We still don't know what this system is going to look like either. So that's what tells me. I don't think this system is coming out in the holiday as as initially uh, uh, you know projected. I would not be surprised if it doesn't come out until spring 2021. But uh, we'll see what happens because again, we still don't really know information regarding when they're going to have their next uh, presentation to talk about the games and all this other stuff. So we'll, we'll see. see. Everything right now is just. Oh, oh no, sorry. I, I was just going to say, to be honest, I don't think either console was coming out this year because in light yeah, of no. what's going on, because they're, they're going to have trouble sourcing parts and stuff like to, to mass produce these consoles. So um, I'm pretty sure both of them are going to be pushed back. Yeah. And remember, Amazon is um, basically delaying regular games. People who pre ordered Final Fantasy. <laughs> and Animal Crossing, New Horizons, for example. We have an article up on the site yep. um, where everything has just gone to complete poop. And poor GameStop also <laughs> has gone to complete poop. Um, so in terms of release dates, I don't think anyone's really concerned right now at the moment with that. I mean, you can't even get toilet tissue. So, you know, it, well. it's, it's not good in that terms. Well, I, I know, I know, well, I know, I know, I know, I know that Gary was very heartbroken when he saw the Final Fantasy Amazon story. So, uh, yep, no, no physical copies, Gary. You have to go digital, or you're gonna be waiting for a while to get your hands on that uh, physical uh, game. Yeah, we we were having this conversation earlier, and I'm I'm like very disturbed about this because I buy like every Final Fantasy game physical because you know I have a collection. Um, so yeah, that that's going to be a problem for me. But uh, I might end up having to buy the game twice for PS4 because I might have to get the digital <laughs> and then the physical. So. Well, this is also kind of changing the way people game. I mean, many people who are like physical only, you you kind of see how screwed you are. And there is moments when you get screwed by buying this digital. Because remember, when they decide to remove it, you can't play the game, yeah. even though you put the money into it. So there's cons to everything, but at the moment, it just kind of seems like everyone is going to probably shift over more towards the digital side. So that's going to change a lot of things. But also in regards to PS5, everything that was not the boring part. Um, I was 
excited or happy, not necessarily excited, but just happy that um, there is going to be more space available um, for the additional SSD. They did not, again, there was no pricing. So that's just kind of like a, a sad moment to not know anything, even to budget or plan at the moment. But um, that the fact that also they had the backwards compatibility with PS4, um, I believe that that one also was really good, and I, I like that it was oh, talked yeah. about. We, we we need to talk about that before we get to mm -hmm. the Xbox stuff. And he said that one of the things that he said was that um, they tested the top 100 PS4 titles on the PS5, and almost all will be playable on the PS5 at launch. So. I'm excited for that because as someone who loves, you know, the old fashioned type of games, that's a positive for me and that you can have these nice graphics that I can't fully explain, but it also is able to be on the console. So that's a good thing. Mm. So yeah, what, what I wanted to say about the uh, backwards compatibility, of course, it's great that we actually get this as a feature, first of all. Because, you know, this wasn't really a feature uh, with the, the <laughs> PS4, you know, when it came out. Um, and they did give us PS Now and everything, but, you know, it, it wasn't it wasn't the same. But, but yeah, so in terms of, you know, this backwards compatibility, we don't, we obviously don't um, have the entire library available for PS4, for PS5 at launch. Um, and, yes, a lot of people see that as a problem you know being that they said that you know only the, the top most you know 100 played games of the ps4 are you know set to, to to be backwards compatible but um i can i can give them a bit of a benefit a, a bit of the benefit of the doubt because microsoft uh with the xbox one x um i mean with the xbox one sorry uh they didn't have uh, backwards com compatibility straight away they kind of it was a gradual process to get all those games you know included in the backwards compatibility so i guess sony does kind of deserve some uh you know leeway there but it's just I, I think it's just our expectations because we all expected this to be an inbuilt feature where we could just take our ps4 disc put it in the playstation 5 like that's what we were you know expecting here um and that in my opinion that should have been the case but um but yeah i mean when when you're kind of when you when you're modifying the architecture it's not easy to do that i understand and it's very expensive too they have come up with a smart solution here to kind of um build some of the logic of the ps4 into the uh you know the, the ps5 and everything and the chipset but it is very disappointing to hear that you know from from all of us who have uh you know a large playstation 4 library and everything some of us like people like me who play very obscure japanese games like jrpgs and stuff like i can bet that a lot of stuff i own probably won't be you know um available to be played on the ps5 straight away so I can understand why a lot of people would be frustrated because you know this should have been a, a big big focus it should have just worked you know um as apple would say it, it should just work but <laughs> <laughs> but hey you know because microsoft did it gradually with the xbox one i think we can kind of give sony some leeway there but but yeah i mean it is what it is i guess we'll wait to hear more about it later on and to to really kind of judge uh how we feel about this but what do you think rich uh well i i do agree that i understand that this is a gradual thing like like you said microsoft did with uh, xbox one with the backwards compatibility so i i understand that they may not have all of those titles available at launch but once again i am a visual person where i would love to see you know show me a ps4 game i guess perfect example maybe show me uncharted 4 running on the ps5 show me what it looked like on ps4 and how you have taken all of these improvements on ps5 this is how it will run on ps5 i feel like they absolutely positively must have some type of demonstration at the next presentation because again 
if this game, if you know, if, if it is going to be on PS4 and there isn't really any change to it whatsoever, maybe it runs faster or so on and so forth. I think that's important for me to know, especially just to know, just to, to actually see the benefit of why am I upgrading to a PS5? What 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 type of performance am I going to get for 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 spending all this other money? Um, but I understand again the 100 PS4 titles is that's cool there was no specifics on what those games are so uh, yeah they need to specify that let let us know what all those games are let us know maybe give periodic updates once you do start this process okay we're going to be updating this is this is the list of the other games that we have added to this system similar to what Microsoft has been doing with uh, Xbox 1 and that's fine and all, but I do have to ask the question of what about the PS3 games? What about these other games? Are all are all of the older generation games going to be on PS now, or do they have plans to also implement that? That's another question I think needs to be answered, because when they said PS4, I thought, okay, that's cool, but what about PS3, PS2, so on and so forth? So um, I feel that they definitely need to clarify uh, quite a bit more of this stuff. And I think right at this point, they're still trying to figure it out themselves. Um, so I will give them the benefit of the doubt. But to know that backwards compatibility is going to be in the system from day one, that's great. Because uh, it should have been in the PS4, to be quite honest, without me having to pay for a PS Now subscription. But uh, yeah. we'll see what happens. <laughs> yeah, like, there were a lot of PlayStation-related anniversaries recently and stuff, and like a lot of positive um you know news and imagery about you know the density of the playstation library and everything i do feel like we should have got backwards compatibility for ps3 ps2 and even ps1 um that that should have definitely been a thing maybe it will be a thing later on you know down the line um or they will probably just push ps now even even you know um even more than they have already on the ps5 i guess but who knows but yeah that should have been that definitely should have been in there i think but i guess it's just not an easy thing for them to do um because that is the you know when, when it comes to the playstation brand that is their strongest selling point the, the, the playstation library the nostalgia you get when you think about you know all the memories you had with playstation 1 playstation 2 um even playstation 3 you know um that is their their biggest strength you know um and it it's you know the thing that makes them super relevant in this industry um same with nintendo too but um but yeah you know like that i'm 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 kind of sad that we didn't get that, like, you know, where you could play all those old games and stuff, but hey, uh, it's something they can work on in the future, I guess. Um, it's not completely out of the question, I guess, but it is what it is. Uh, the one thing I don't want to see, though, is I don't want to move into this new generation and see a bunch of remasters again, because that's, oh, yeah. that's one thing that kind of killed this generation for me, like the PS4, <laughs> Xbox One. <laughs> There were way too many remasters coming out and there were remasters of games that came out like a few years ago like <laughs> it's like no thanks I, I don't want to see any more of that i think the new trend is probably going to be um just upgrades so like say there's a ps4 game um you know like final fantasy remake there will there will probably be like a next gen boost for it or something and they'll probably if they if they um end up selling the next gen up upgrades I won't be happy about that because I feel like that should just be given to you because you're buying a product. Um, they should just give you, like, if you're on, let's say you buy Final Fantasy Remake on PS4, you upgrade to a PS5, you own, you already own Final Fantasy Remake, you own a license for that game, right? So they should just give you the next gen update without you having to pay. So if they make a trend out of charging people, to get the next gen boost in graphics and performance i'm not going to be happy about that and that will be something that will keep me on pc instead of like being on consoles uh, I, I think if if those kind of business practices become the norm in the next generation then 
you know, I'm, I'm only going to be playing exclusive games on PlayStation 5 whenever I actually get around to buying a console because I'm not going <laughs> to I'm not going to buy it straight away. I can tell you that now I'm not going to buy it on day one. But whenever I do get around to buying the console, if, if those kind of business practices exist, I'm only playing exclusive games on PlayStation 5 um, and mm. the same for Xbox if I do get that. You know? Um, and most of the games, the other games, I'm going to be playing on PC because I, I don't support these business practices from these, these greedy publishers. So, uh oh, whoa, that, that's what I've got to say about that. Uh, no more remasters, though. <laughs> yes, no, no more remasters. Yep. We'll see. Hmm. All right, so, um, are there any other thoughts that y'all wanted to talk about with uh, this particular reveal of it? Because uh, actually, Gary, you mentioned earlier about the uh, 825 gigabyte SSD. So mm -hmm. feel free to tell us what your problem was with that. Because I also have a problem with that. But I want to hear what you got to say about that first. <laughs> yeah, so... <sighs> um, for me, that that's too low. Um, moving into a new generation it should have been two terabytes standard but I, I do believe that there's probably going to be different SKUs so like you know there'll, there'll be like a there'll be the one terabyte PS5 and then there'll be the two terabyte which would be slightly more expensive so I think that's going to be a thing but um but yeah it would have been nice to get two terabytes standard because we know how big these games are actually getting you know some games are like over a hundred gigabytes now, easy. Um, and then you know you get patches and all that stuff, which bloats it further. Um, so yeah, like it, it should have been too standard. But I mean, uh, the the Xbox Series X has one terabyte. Um, now the fact that it's eight hundred and twenty five is a bit like you know what the heck. But I will say that you know usually the oper operating system does take up a huge like a little chunk of you know uh your your main storage um and it just seems like sony has accounted for that in their numbers in their figures whereas microsoft are just telling you it's they, they rounded it up basically but you're not getting the full one terabyte you know on mm -hmm. the xbox anyway so so that's one thing i can say with that but um but let me say this uh you know, because I, I assume we're, we're going to get into, you know, the Xbox comparison stuff. Oh, yeah. But, um, That's coming. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, although although I'm not happy with the the main um, the main sides of the SSD, the uh, the speed, the read speed is is the strongest plane of the PS5. Like, it's what separates it. So I will say that. Yeah. Yeah, the read speed is definitely uh, an improvement on, on, on the Sony side, uh, so I have to give them credit for that. But in, in, in to go to what you, what you said about the actual 825 uh, gigabyte, you know, SSD is a very good choice for sure. Um, it's it's a lot faster than the standard hard drive, so that's a good choice. But um, I also agree that that's not a lot because I know when, when the PS4 came out, we all had the standard 500 gigabyte hard drive. And I, I, I would have to say maybe about 85% of the people that I know that bought a PS4 ended up upgrading that drive as soon as they had an option to, to like a two terabyte or, or higher. At the time, two terabyte, I believe, was the highest that you could get to put in the system. And then later on, you can actually get an external or, you know, yeah, a, a, a external at a higher, you know, uh, you know, with, with more space on it. But, um, yeah, I, I, you know, 825 gigabytes, that is not enough because these games, obviously, they're going to have their whole uh, the term. They're going to mention the term 8K when they talk about PS, uh, PS5 and, you know, that means that the file sizes are going to be a lot bigger. So to me. That definitely is not going to be enough. I know they mentioned in the presentation, well, there are going to be some other compatible drives that we're also going to talk about. And we didn't get any of that information yet because I guess, again, they're still figuring all this stuff out. I, I applaud them for 
sharing some information because again they haven't been talking anything about the system until today not nothing concrete there was little bits and pieces of information that came out from time to time but compared to microsoft they absolutely have not really said anything of any sh real value until today so that's good but they still have a ton of information they have to talk about communicate with the audience and clarify especially when it comes to this type of stuff because again people who are going to spend if i assume that the system is going to cost five hundred dollars you know perhaps i'm going to definitely want to be able to fit a lot of games on the hard drive and to me just based off of how we see how things went this generation you know that 825 gigabytes that is not enough you're going to be deleting stuff left and right as soon as you finish playing the game you have to possibly delete it um just to install other games so hopefully they will provide more information on this stuff um but we will have to wait and see it for that for right now so um how about you dana did you have any other thoughts on um the presentation before we dive into uh this comparison with the uh, xbox Series x well overall the show was not exactly what i expected it to be and you can't even say that it's because of the, the situation that we're dealing with right now it is a presentation and again they could have made it a bit more lively but at the same time they gave us completely solid information straightforward facts about what we can expect in the upcoming console so again that was the plus side we got exactly what we asked for what is the ps5 all about what can we expect in terms of just the console itself so i'm not mad at that um we'll have to see what's gonna happen in the next shows but for so far they they did exactly what they said they was gonna do and you can't really complain when they kind of, you know, stuck to their word in that regard. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Uh, I mean, Marks, I, I think we all should have expected this kind of uh, stream when once they said Mark Cerny is going to be the guy, you know, <laughs> giving it. <laughs> you know, not, not, not to diss Mark Cerny no. or anything, but, you know, he's a super super intellectual you know computer guy like he just he thinks in codes like he's neo the one basically like from the matrix yeah um <laughs> but you know so he, he doesn't know how to kind of um uh you know i guess dumb things down for you know an audience and things like that so this this is really um I'm not saying there's anything wrong with this style of stream either, but I, I feel like what happened was people um, people were so thirsty for PlayStation information that, you know, we kind of were just excited that there was actually something coming, you know, when we heard uh, the, the announcement or whatever. Um, so, you know, people kind of, they, they got their expectations very high. They thought, okay, this is it. We're going to finally, you know, see everything we want to see. We're going to find out everything. But it... it you know it wasn't that kind of show it was just you know this was literally just about the architecture um and yeah. i guess their logic behind going with what they're going with um i'll say one thing though i think with, with these delays that are happening worldwide and everything i think there's room for both companies to change these specs so i i don't know if this is actually final Mm -hmm. To be honest, like the, the, I wouldn't be surprised if either company changes something by by now and release date of the console, or you know, because because I mean, both 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 companies are gonna have like um, other press conferences or whatever. So I wouldn't be surprised if something does change uh, because they're gonna have, they're likely gonna have to delay the console. So why not, you know? Um, and that the prices of parts might actually come down so why not why not tweak a few things you know so who knows um, i'm not saying for sure that's going to happen but I, I wouldn't be surprised i Did, i just go ahead I, I i just would like to add that i i personally am hoping that the consoles are delayed because i mean a lot of the games that at least the games we know about so far that are supposed to come out this fall they're they're coming out on the current consoles also so um i think it will make sense to just delay May, you know maybe spring of next year you have the xbox and the playstation 5 come out 
that'll just be a better time because we will hope by then we would have gotten through all that's going on now with all these uh you know all, all, how everything else is, is impacted but um that's just my guess but i mean ultimately we'll see what happens microsoft phil spencer has been telling everybody um the xbox Series x it, it, it's it doesn't look as though it's going to miss the initial time that they said they were going to release it but at the same time they have not provided more information yet so we'll have to wait and see but yeah if they both get delayed i think that's a good strategy because it gives you more time to really get people ready to invest in these consoles and have games ready for them because we already know at least from microsoft's end that the next halo game halo and halo uh is, is going to also be on the regular xbox one so there is no need to really come out with the new consoles um this fall if you need to delay it by a couple of months that is totally fine but we'll see what path they ultimately uh decide to take yeah we'll see man uh it, things are things are really unpredictable right now so it's going to be interesting to uh, see how all of this unfolds and see how both companies react to each other because yeah that, that was quite interesting as well that microsoft had a stream uh right after <laughs> Sony. yeah yeah they, they've been having uh you know a lot of their gdc conversations they they, they decide to still have this stuff uh, di uh digitally or online for you to see because they i believe they had some events yesterday as well they're going to probably have a couple more too based on the schedule that gdc had put out there so they're going to continue to definitely talk about the system and then of course they already announced that they're going to definitely have some type of digital show around the time they were going to have e3 to talk more about the system so on and so forth so um we'll see what happens but uh since you had mentioned microsoft we're already talking about that now you can really dive into the uh, specs for the current specs for the xbox series x because you said that that yeah that might change so based on what it is right now though uh what are the specs for those that haven't had a chance to check it out okay so for those that came here for the console war okay, let's, <laughs> <laughs> let's get right into it so I'm, I'm i'm just gonna focus on the the you know the main uh the juicy bits and pieces here i'm not gonna read out the entire you know thing but okay so when it comes to cpu um, like I said earlier, you know, um, the PlayStation 5 has AX Zen 2 cores at 3.5 gigahertz, right? And on the Xbox Series X side, they have uh, AX Zen 2 cores at 3.8 gigahertz. So, you know, uh, so that's like a three point difference there. Mm. Um, and uh, when it comes to the GPU, which is the biggest, you know, probably the biggest deal here that uh, people are focusing on. PlayStation 5 has 10.28 teraflops at 2.23 gigahertz. Whereas the Xbox Series X has 12 teraflops. Um, and that is at 1.825 um, G gigahertz, basically. So yeah, uh, big difference there. Uh, that you know kind of when it comes to graph graphics and everything that gives my, uh, Microsoft the edge of, of course so um, there you go um, now performance though performance might be a different story because um, you know on the on the PlayStation side well first of all both systems have 16 gigabytes of GD, GDDR um, RAM so that's great um, but you know when it comes to the the, the ssd and everything mm -hmm. sony has like sony is going to be able to like i think their games are going to perform better overall when it comes to the, the performance so like the xbox series x is going to have the graphics edge for sure um you know especially like it's 4k and everything as well both systems 4k but like um you know Microsoft is just going to have that edge. Their, their games are going to look, they're going to have like much more textures, much more going on, much more detail and everything. But when it comes to frame rates and things of that nature, Sony might have the edge there because, um, you know, with the 
the um, the IO, like the, the speed, the disc speed and everything, it's 5.5 GB on the PlayStation side Ooh. compared to um, it. Well, there's two here. There's 2.4. That's raw. 2.4 gigabytes raw. Compressed, it's 4.8 gigabytes. So compressed is basically when you know if uh, it's, it's quite interesting that they put that there actually um, to, to tell the difference. But yeah, so like companies can basically do compression techniques to make it run faster on xbox so that might actually mean that some companies downscale some of those graphics to make it perform on a comparable rate to the playstation 5 so yeah. that could be a thing um so yeah i mean on paper xbox series x has the edge um they have more teraflops you know um they have uh there's like point differences. There's a lot of point differences between you know uh, some of the specs on on the uh, PlayStation. I mean, on the Xbox side, like they they they're a lot higher at certain points. But I think that um, the the read speed of the um, you know the the PlayStation Five that is their biggest edge, and that kind of that could that could help them. That that's the one thing that could help them is the read speed. Because you know, people do want fast performance and everything. Um, people do care about frame rates, mm -hmm. but but hey, I, I guess we, we just have to wait and see. Um, and there's one thing that determines all of this, and that is games and game developers and game publishers. So yeah, they are basically they, like the the people who make the games. They are basically in charge of who which side wins here because if they choose to um you know uh, make their games for playstation 5 in mind first then sony is gonna have an edge just for performance alone but if they go on the xbox side there's a lot they can do there to kind of make make the xbox games out outshine the playstation games so it just depends on what each publisher decides to do with the games um, and you know, I mean, that's fundamentally what what always matters the most. Games is why we're here. So games are what always matters. So um, yeah, I mean, these specs, like I said before, both consoles have great specs. Both of them, you know, the, like this is not bad on either side. It's just a matter of what the game developers choose to do. That's what matters the most. Absolutely, I agree. Um, one other point that I will add before I go to Dana is, um, yeah, like you said, on paper, it looks as though the Xbox Series X definitely has the edge. But anyone who knows with PlayStation, and if you don't know, you definitely should have known if you were paying attention this whole generation. PlayStation's library of games is just absolutely dominates that, that whole our argument because they have so many different titles. Uh, they started new franchises. They've continued franchises that people enjoy. So no doubt about it. When it comes to software, we know that they will deliver. Um, so, and I believe that software is what drives the console. It's not the fact that it's uh, a more powerful or less powerful console. It's really about the games because what are you going to be playing to keep you preoccupied? That's what people should be asking themselves. So, again, like I said. Uh, we definitely have to learn more information about the console. Uh, uh, but, you know, Sony, as I mentioned earlier, I think it will be in their benefit to have some type of demonstration the next time they decide to have a, uh, an actual show. Um, have a demonstration to show people this is what the game looks like running on this system. Uh, just so that they have an idea. And then, of course, obviously talk about the games that are coming to the system. There have been rumors about games that are coming to the system. So we definitely know some stuff that's in development. But um, yeah, I just think really the next show, I think, is going to be the one that people are going to be most excited for because we'll actually get a lot more concrete information besides just the architecture, which we already will know. Maybe there'll be some updates to that. But yeah, I feel that we'll definitely have more information without a doubt um, the next time that um, Sony drops a presentation. So we have to wait on that. But um. Dana, any additional thoughts on the uh, Xbox One X, Series X, and the uh, PS5? 
Well, overall, just is, just by looking on paper, it seems that Microsoft has the edge. Um, we don't know yet because again, we're waiting for the games and exclusives and how that really works out. But judging just by numbers and the specs and everything else, technical wise, um, Xbox again will outperform in in that regard. Um, kind of like it's always done. Please don't kill me. In oh. years past, oh. go ahead. Not saying both consoles are both amazing, but just you know, Microsoft has just had that edge a little bit. So again, we'll just have to see. But yeah, yeah, I, I agree. Uh, we'll see, but it's definitely going to be fun times ahead. Uh, in terms of seeing um, as we learn more about these consoles and seeing what Microsoft and Sony does to try to uh, convince uh, consumers to pick up their console. So um, looking forward to that. Yeah, and, and one last take. I uh, just want to add in here. Um, you know, Sony spent a lot of time talking about the audio engine. Yeah. Uh, like mm-hmm. the 3D audio and all that. So that kind of tells me that... Um, Sony is trying to go more on the experience side, like the the entertainment experience, you know, the whole kind of entertainment, like they're they're, they're really kind of tailoring to those people who, um, you know, take, you know, all aspects of their setup seriously, like TV, um, sound systems and all that stuff, you know, like they're really going for the full experience, whereas Microsoft um, they're probably going for, you know, the hardcore spec heads, um, you know, and graphics, you know, graphic fans, basically, or people who really care about graphics in games and things like that. So um, I think Sony kind of knows that Microsoft has the edge when it comes to, you know, the teraflops and graphics and everything. But they, I think they understand that they can, um, they can kind of pull people in a different way by selling a whole experience so i think maybe that's the angle that they might go with uh in in terms of their marketing because that that engine technology it is impressive i'm not sure how many people actually care about it um me personally i don't like it's not something i care about a lot but i recognize that it is good um technology so for the people who who love that so Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And uh any final thoughts, uh Dana? <laughs> uh, is she muted? Are you muted, Dana? Sorry, the audio. I like I have an audio issues. No, that would that was it with the thoughts. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so um as I mentioned at the start of the show, we just wanted to have a real quick discussion on um, today's PS5 reveal. We definitely have more content coming to you very soon. Uh, and as for the co-op, yes, the official co-op is coming back very, very soon. Um, stay tuned for that because we're working out a couple of kinks now to make the show a little bit different than what you've seen in the past. But uh, we very much look forward to getting back to talking about games on a regular basis. So thank you for your continued support and definitely stick out because stick around because we do have some stuff uh in, that's in the works yeah um, and just to add to that you know as as these uh as more and more information comes out about both platforms we will uh-oh. we will try and stay on top of it and cover this further as well so absolutely uh and speaking of this very quickly uh, breaking news. Um, oh, all right. Uh, breaking news. Xbox Series X is coming Thanksgiving 2020. Microsoft just confirmed this. Whoa. So I guess Microsoft. I, I guess the system is not going to be delayed. <laughs> that, that's interesting. Like that. That tells me that Microsoft is feeling very bold about this. <laughs> 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 wow. Um. I think what what Sony needs to really do, they need to lock in a lot of uh, new studios because I feel like Microsoft might get a lot of third party support 
in this oh, yeah. next generation. And if they get that, that means all of the third party games are going to end up looking and probably performing better on, on the Xbox. So <laughs> <laughs> Sony needs to lock in, lock in their own studios because they have a they, they already have a great lineup of, of you know, um, IPs that we'd like to see from them. Um, you know, Last of Us, God of War, um, Horizon, you know, um, all these big IPs that people love. So they need to start locking in more studios. Uh, definitely, they need to lock in a big Japanese studio too, I think, like level five or, you know, um, uh, what's, what's the other one? Uh, can't think right now, but yeah, they need to, um, they need to lock in some studios that will focus on, on creating like amazing and unique experiences just for the PlayStation 5. Mm -hmm. Cause, cause I don't think a lot of third party developers will end up using that extra speed to the PlayStation's advantage fully. Um, if, if Microsoft gets all that third party support. So, so yeah, that would be my advice for Sony. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll see what happens. Uh, Definitely looking forward to to seeing what happens with both of these consoles. We'll definitely hear more news in the in the weeks and months ahead. So, as I mentioned earlier, everybody stay tuned. Uh, we'll definitely have a lot more to talk about in due time. But for now, we thank you all for listening. Uh, any final shout outs that you would like to give? Uh, I'll go to you first, Dana. Uh, I'm not even sure if she's there or not. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. We'll come back to her. Any final shout outs you want to give, Gary? Uh, I just want to um, I want to shout out all the people who you know kind of been hitting us up uh, behind the scenes in our absence and everything. Um, of course, you know the the website design took up a lot of time for me and everything. Um, that that took quite a few weeks of planning. There was like some some issues that I ran into as well. So uh, that took up some time. Um, we you know we wanted to do that in January, but there was some uh, problems to overcome. So uh, finally, the the new design is live, and people are responding well to it. People are telling me that they love it, which is great. Um, so now you know we can really focus on making content again. But I do want to thank all of the people who continue to ask about the co-op and um, when we're coming back to do you know podcasts and talk about games and, about games. and uh, things of that nature. Because uh, <laughs> you guys kept us wanting to do this and wanting to come back. Um, but yeah, um, from my side, you know, um, there, there's a lot of reasons why we kind of took that break. But from my side, um, I went through a lot of things personally last year, um, you know, family related, job related and, and everything. And I, my mind wasn't really on games for, for a long time. Um, but, you know, now some of that excitement is starting to come back. So um, it's good to be back. And I thank everyone for kind of, you know, um, reminding us of why we, we love doing this in the first place. So. Shouts to all those people. Shouts to Wesley. Shouts to um, to to Marcus, um, and you know all of our Patreon supporters as well. I agree a hundred percent. It is definitely good to be back. As you mentioned, we we had a a couple of things we had to deal with on our end over the last uh, several months, but. Uh, Yes, it is a very good feeling to be able to record these shows again, and we will be consistent as we were in the past. So uh, definitely would encourage everybody to uh, stick around and stay tuned for some more great discussions and more, some more great, great, great content. Great content. And, uh, and Dana's officially back now, Dana. So uh, do you want to give any, any uh, shout outs, Dana? I'm having so many technical difficulties. Uh oh! Uh, shout outs to everyone who listened uh, and who listens to us and is on the site and and reads the stuff on the site. So shout out to you guys and um, just everyone stay safe and happy. Absolutely. Absolutely. And if you're looking for a very good laugh, 
a very entertaining read. Definitely read Dana's article about GameStop. Yes. Excellent. Excellent. But uh, until then, thank you all for listening. We will talk to you all next time. Next time.